we are following breaking news coming out of the Middle East. Two more hostages, both Israeli women, have been released by Hamas. Those two women released today, one is 79, the other is 85. They were handed over to the Red Cross. Now that follows the release of two Americans last week. In the meantime, press pause. That is said to be the position of the U.S. as Israel prepares to launch a ground invasion inside Gaza. It has now been more than two weeks since that deadly attack by Hamas. The U.S. reportedly wants Israel to delay any invasion. It wants more time for hostage negotiations. Meanwhile, officials are saying they are also trying to get more humanitarian aid into Gaza. But here's the problem. Israel has promised to wipe Hamas off the map. So far, more than 5,000 Palestinians have been killed, more than 15,000 wounded. At least 1,400 people in Israel has also lost their lives. Already today, Israeli warplanes say they have hit more than 300 militant targets inside Gaza, focusing on sites where troops might be threatened once the ground operation begins. Israel also said to be targeting locations in Syria and Lebanon and the occupied West Bank, warning Hezbollah inside Lebanon of devastating consequences if they open a northern front. Meanwhile, that aid slowly starting to flow into Gaza. More than 30 trucks loaded with food, water, and medicine allowed in over the weekend. A smaller convoy arriving today. None, though, carried fuel, which is badly needed by the hospitals there. Nasser Hospital in southern Gaza saying it will run out of fuel in the next 48 hours. Keep in mind, that is the fuel that keeps babies alive in their neonatal unit. One doctor saying half of those babies will die within a day if they run out of gas. We know um, uh, you need fuel to run uh, power generators in hospitals. You need fuel to run the pumps and in the desalination uh, facilities so that people can drink fresh, uh, healthy water. So fuel is another thing that we're, that we're working on. As you just heard, at the White House, there are growing concerns that the conflict between Israel and Hamas will escalate. That is why the United States says it is beefing up its military presence in the Middle East. The Pentagon announcing it will add more air defense systems and putting additional troops on standby. Meanwhile, 10 Americans are still missing since that war broke out. Our White House correspondent Haley Bull has been tracking all of these developments. They are fast moving. And Haley, what has the White House said about the 10 Americans still missing? And do we know if it is Hamas that is actually holding them hostage? Good afternoon, Dell. Officials here are describing the effort on hostage recovery as an hour by hour one. And as you said, they still believe 10 Americans are unaccounted for, uh, but that it is still uh, about a handful of those believed held hostage by Hamas. Now, this afternoon, we are learning from the International Committee of the Red Cross uh, that there have been the release of two more hostages uh, from Hamas. Now, the White House has not commented on that at this time, but keep in mind, uh, when it comes to these efforts, which have uh, involved a number of countries, uh, the administration has been very careful to keep the details and the commentary very close to the chest, given the very sensitive nature uh, of this. Now, the president has called uh, securing the release of hostages uh, a top priority, uh, but that comes amidst the backdrop of increasing concern on the potential uh, for escalation. The Pentagon citing uh, concerns over the potential for escalation from Iran and its proxies and bolstering the United States uh, defense posture in the Middle East region. Uh, and some of the updates to that include a total of two carrier strike groups uh, in the region, uh, bolstering air defense in that area and putting more troops on prepared to deploy alerts. Uh, the White House addressing some of this today. Listen. We know Iran continues to support Hamas and Hezbollah. And we know that Iran is closely monitoring these events and in some cases actively facilitating these attacks and spurring on others who may want to exploit the conflict for their own good or for that of Iran. We know Iran's goal is to maintain some level of deniability here, but we're not going to allow them to do that. As President Biden has said, our message to any hostile actor seeking to escalate or widen this conflict is very simple. Don't do it. 
And that comes as Iranian officials continue rhetoric about the potential uh, for the expansion of conflict. Uh, and after uh, troops intercepted missiles and drones from Iranian-backed Houthi forces out of Yemen last week, as well as engaged with drones in Syria and Iraq. Now, in concluding remarks on an unrelated economic speech this afternoon, the president noted he was going to the situation room, but uh, for what matter, that's unclear, Dell. And also, what has the White House, if anything, said about Israel's planned ground invasion of Gaza? The White House has been very clear that it supports uh, Israel's defense and going after Hamas, but has also been navigating, uh, underscoring the importance of protecting civilians. And as the White House has uh, described in calls between officials here and Israelis, following what they call uh, the rules of war. Now, officials said uh, they have been talking to them about uh, their strategy, their plans, and asking them to ask uh, the tough questions that uh, they say any military should ask, Dell. Haley Bull, our White House correspondent, live at the White House on a fast-moving day. Haley, as always, we thank you very much.